What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode 29 of Chat Grapple and Cheat Pops podcast with everyone's favorite Chris, Chris Dredd, <laughs> and some people's favorite JB, me. Um, <laughs> it was put to me this week that we could well technically be Hertfordshire's number one wrestling podcast. It, it's quite possible. I believe it, bruv. I believe it, you know? Anyone thinks any, anything otherwise, come and talk to us properly. You know, we'd, we'd have a Come see time. us. Yeah. We'll fucking, we'll meet you in Asda's car park. You know what I mean? If you've got come, a problem. Come at us, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, do, how you doing? You're right. I'm all right, bruv, yeah. I'm, um, you know, rocking the old uh, hoodie look, covering yeah, over the five head. head. It's a um, yeah, it's just a bit chilly, mate. But yeah, I'm all good, mate. Yeah. You? As, as things? Uh, you know how it is, you know, we've, we we chat outside of this and Chris knows what's going on, you know, it's always, wrestling is my therapy. <laughs> and he knows that. Um, I'll tell you that, what though, watching this show is a little bit like going for an operation. Fuck. Talking, talking about it is going to be therapeutic for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, we are talking about uh, WCW greed. We will get to that. Yeah, you know, in a few moments because there is a lot to talk about. Wrestling world is doing bits and pieces. It's doing things. It's you know a little bit all over the place. I'm not really sure where we picked up last time. Maybe Paul White signing for AEW, but it was. Um, yeah. Latest pay per view Sunday night AEW Revolution. I'm holding my hands out to it. It was a bit of a dud. It was in. It was especially a dud at the end. You know the explosion thing. You know, whatever. You know it. Malfunction, non malfunction, cheaping out on explosives. Whatever. It's fine. Like that. That's, was not, th- that was not the worst thing about this, this show. It it wasn't. But th- th- that's the thing that's annoyed me is like anyone who's trying to. Uh, anyone who's trying to say anything supporting the pay-per-view saying, oh, people are just having a go because of the end thing. No, dude, fuck me. It was pretty much the whole show was fucking rubbish. Um, But people are acting as if it was like, again, it's shoved down our throats by a certain demo um, that it was the best thing since fucking sliced pizza. And it really was not. Literally, some of the things we've seen online, and I'm not going to name people by name because they don't deserve it, but... You know, some people saying this is the best thing ever, you know, the greatest pay-per-view ever done. Oh, it's like I'm 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 literally just sitting there going, whatever these people are smoking, or maybe they're on the on the beak that we talked about in our last you know review. Maybe they're trying to improve their promos and they're on the beak. Who knows? The other thing is that a lot of people seem to have gimmicks these days, you know, people that aren't wrestlers and, you know, they, it, it's their gimmick to trash stuff and it's their gimmick to be, you know, edgy and cool and funny and, um, yeah, it's not. So, speaking of not funny, um, AW Dynamite, like, we're not, we're not skipping over Revolution because there was a few things there, but Dynamite had a couple of bits that wasn't funny either. Um, 69 me don does that make you laugh well i mean it, it, it but they're not trying to make me laugh bruv they're popping the boys again bruv it's yeah. it's it, it you know again it's just another you know there was so and with revolution as well there was a couple of in jokes that are just they're trying to pop the boys bruv the brass ring was one of them um you know they're just tro- popping the boys my my problem with this with revolution being a, being as bad as it could have been and it was, is that it took away from the things that should have been talked about, should have been good. You know, you know, Ethan Page made his debut. That's that's great. You know, he's a he's a he's a good wrestler. You know, should have should have been talked about more. Christian Cage made his debut. Like he walked out into the AEW arena as the big surprise. I think he was a little underwhelming. He's 47 years old with a history of concussion problems. But how yes, are you not going to... Yes, he's been cleared. He's obviously been cleared to wrestle, but I wouldn't trust my life with those AEW trainers and doctors, would you? Right. How are you going to How are you gonna get Christian Cage and not give him a mic to at least say something? Maybe they're running out of time. 
you know, they're not. Well, they could. I'll tell you what. There's back, so. There's a couple of matches they could have fucking reined in. I'm telling you, they could have saved themselves at least five or ten minutes on fucking some of the matches. How many super kicks would you think it takes to put someone down for a three count? How many kicks would a super kick kick if a super kick could kick kicks? Um, it's fucking one of them ones, yeah. bro. It's like, um, I thought it was five. You corrected me and told me it was six that um, it, they hit the Bucks oh, hit MJF I, I, and it just yeah. It was bad. I don't want to. In a way, I don't want to get into it because it'll get me really pissed off. No, we, we we are gonna we're gonna skim because because dynamite was a bit better. Dynamite had things that was all right. You know, they they did explain things. They did. You know, they finally moved someone into a heel. You know, again, it's another faction, but you know that there was a there was a conversation that I saw again today saying that you know AEW is doing right by their superstars by having so many factions on tv that way everyone gets a spot no that means everyone gets lost in the shuffle let's be honest do do you remember a time hence the michael jackson song do you remember the time when we had loads of fucking factions on tv and you had um you know, you had the you lost Bariquas. I think we've covered a show. DOA, you had like yeah. DOA, lost Bariquas. Nation, yeah, you, know, you know, you had fucking factions coming out of your ass. And, and it's one of those where people just the, get lost the in a faction. Huh? The Truth Commission. Who yeah. was in charge of that? Wasn't it the Jackal? Don Callis? The, 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 the <laughs> you know, it's one of them things where, you know, I, as you can see, okay, Every single week, I'll talk about him. And I'm going to show you him now. This guy, MJF, okay? He doesn't need a faction, right? Little Maxwell. He, he doesn't need a faction. All it needs is him and Wardlow to just be complete motherfuckers. It just needs them to just go on a rampage of just being douchebags. But the again, this is... I. I stayed up and I watched the pay-per-view live. I fell asleep halfway through and then I watched the rest the next day. Yeah, I fell asleep. The, 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 the problem with AEW is, okay, they're not doing anything properly, so nothing matters. When you've got um, a tag team match and through half of the tag team match, you've not got the tag teams, the other partner in the actual corner. They're walking around the side of the ring. They're walking around the edge of the ring. They're talking to the crowd. It's completely getting lost. Um, what a when manager things... should do, right? Huh? Well, let's just have a manager. Well, exactly. But, you know, it's, you know, it, nothing means anything. So no one gives a fuck, you know? It's the classic, they're trying to just not do things properly or do things the, the, the way that things have traditionally been done. But because they're not really following any kind of rules or patterns or anything in, in matches with booking and, and stuff, like it, none of it makes any sense. None of it makes sense. None of the matches are cohesive. None of the booking is is even, I would call it booking. The fact that it's that Tony Khan was called Booker in a year by the Observer Awards is just fucking laughable. Um, you Let know, me stop you right there, if you don't mind. I um I have a treat for you, Chris. Oh God. Um I didn't know, and this is a this is an exclusive. I did not know that Chris was so well in. This is almost like a heel turn for me. That Chris was so well in with Tony Khan, <laughs> and I have the picture to prove it. And I'm sending this to Chris live. He did not know I was I had this picture, right? But look at this. Chris is gonna. He's already said to me he's gonna put it on the YouTube uh, video to to show everyone. Look at this. <laughs> you fucking motherfucker. Look how happy they Look, are. Is he... <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Tony, yeah? Like, <laughs> I'm genuinely taken aback. I mean, I don't know how you got this photo, dude. Um Sunset Skip is in the background there. Yeah, Skip was there, man. Of course he um, was. Skip was always there. Um, what is it that he's holding there? What is going? 
You say how did you get this man? Tony Khan, that's what you're holding. You're holding. Who's t- your? Who's this contact, bro? Who do you know? Who did this? <laughs> <laughs> Who did this? God damn it! Um, now, look like I said, this is fuck. this has definitely got to be on the YouTube vid for people to see. It will be thing. on the. It'll be on the video. I will. I will make sure on screen, right in between myself and Jordan. You'll be. I might even do it full screen. You can. You. Oh my god! Where did Sorry, you get man. that? You know, <laughs> I need to speak to Sunset Skip as well, man. He was involved. You Skip know, was there the whole time. God uh, damn it! Um, wow. That was a yeah. That's just a, that's just having a bit of fun because you know we need to. Um, did you watch it's, Dynamite? Did you catch any of it? Did you? I, I caught some. Yeah. To be honest, I was all, I was all AEW'd out, mate. I was I was AEW'd out. I watched yeah. a four hour pay per view plus an hours. Um, pre-show, I just I I I couldn't take any more. If I would have seen one more kick out, I think I would have you know probably cried. Um, it doesn't make it edgy; it just makes it rubbish. On the flip side, Eddie Kingston did cut a really deep. He cut a decent promo, apart from that joke about Impact in there, saying that they provided the exposure or paid for the exposure or whatever. He explained it really well. He explained that he passed out, you know, because of those fireworks around the ring. He, it was a panic attack. And that was, re- that was a really good way to get around it. And, I mean, Eddie Kingston cuts a great promo. Like, I'm not going to... There's no There's no way to, you know, say that he doesn't. He does cut excellent promos. His ring gear needs a little fixing, but that's that's little things. Like, he probably will be the next challenger to Kenny Omega unless they stick. They're putting the cage in. Yeah. yeah, they're sticking cage in, bro. They've already started. They've already done it. And this is another thing that gets on my fucking gets on my tits with with the AEW fanboys that just don't want to hear anything negative about AEW. They're the first ones to say that they don't want WWE stars, that they what you know they need to make their own stars and all this and they're Christine building Cage up their own TNA stars. Star, man. Don't you know but then they you know but then they're literally like wanking over Big Show and Christian coming in and saying it's the best thing that could happen. It's like you know and you've got a star like MJF who is literally ready to be the biggest heel that that show has. Um, him and Wardlow could be the absolute Tom, the, 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 you know, Tom Tits. Well, they, they, but, they are now part of another group, you know, which involves FTR, who are a great tag team. And Sean Spears, who I don't, I don't necessarily rate. I never have. He was, I can't remember the name of it. He was that perfect 10, whatever thing in NXT. and Yeah. Yeah, it, it didn't work for me then. It, you know, he's the chairman because he hits people with chairs, and they did they did beat up the inner circle last night or Wednesday night on Dynamite. Yes, MJF doesn't need more backup than Wardlow. Wardlow is the beast, but but you can see what's going to happen again. You know, you've got two factions clashing. You're going to end up with MJF versus Chris Jericho. We'll have, we'll have another stadium match a stadium scramble type thing oh joy of Remember fucking joys i cannot fucking wait can you see sammy my face we will, will get chased with a golf cart the anticipation is killing me already or sammy will chase someone with a golf cart sorry there we go that'll fix it sammy will chase mj with a golf cart done um unconfirmed reports that johnny ace is back in talent relations in the wwe I heard that as well. Yeah. Mr. Excitement that. himself. Um, the dude with attitude. Uh, not that well liked from what we can, you know, what we've been reading. But yeah, I mean, is he that much of a problem? Well, it, when, when, you, when you're in a certain position and you've got to do a certain job and you've got to tell right, thing, yeah. people certain things you know you're in a position where not everybody's going to like you so i mean you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea so it is what it is man it's like you know personally i couldn't give a fuck who's in that position yeah um it's i mean it's a bit of a no story but there's not been a lot of wwe news really they 
you know, they unveiled new women's NXT tag team champions. Those women lost those tag team championships on NXT that same night. So, yeah. like, there's, again, the news is not massive. Bobby Lashley looked great in his first defense of his title. He, you know, has that new entrance that looks full of full of pyro, which is which made me chuckle. Um, <laughs> Yeah, again, yeah, WWE News is pretty slim on the ground. Um, yeah. AEW had another problem last night uh, at Dynamite when they, instead of playing the audio from Dynamite, they were playing audio from a basketball game over a wrestling match for about five minutes. It's almost like someone wants them to fuck up. It, but you know what? No, um, no, no. What it is, is um, they meant to do that. It's going to be incorporated in the storyline uh, to do with Shaq. Um, like, like the bad explosions. It, yeah, it's, yeah. It, no. You know, I fucking, I've, I've seen some, some real stretches online of people trying to justify. I, I saw, I've got shit. one more stretch for you. Um, WWE underutilizing talent, not using, and the three names that were brought up, uh, let me see if I can remember him now. Andrade, Alistair Black, and oh no, I can only remember two actually. Never mind. Um, and these were some of the comments that I was seeing were just astounding. They're so underutilized. They should be, you know, getting the first taxi to AEW where they become game changers. I'm like, they're not game changers. They're good, good, really good talent. But is Andrade a game changer? Could be, you know, in a couple of years. There's some really good booking behind him. I'm not saying that good booking is going to be in Jacksonville. And Alistair Black, you know, is he a victim of what happened with his wife? Maybe. But yeah, but again, she, she hasn't turned. She hasn't turned up in AEW yet, has she? Not People yet. People been no. talking about it. And is he a game changer? And the answer is no. Did you did you see um was it Peyton Royce's uh, promo? I did. I liked it. I thought it was good as well, man. Yeah. You know, she was like, you know, it was from the heart. It was like, you know, give me Asuka. Um, all right, cool, nice. Yeah. Um, you know, and, but and another thing though, it's like, it is. I I think that's what they're working towards. It it seems like every other week on you know Raw Talk or Talking Smack, someone who doesn't always necessarily get a chance to cut a killer promo, unless it's Paul Heyman, because he's always doing it. Yeah. Someone gets a chance to cut a promo or say something, you know, that feels real to them, feels like, you know, something that's really, like, been weighing down on them. And some of them are just knocking it out of the park. Yeah. Like, Daniel Bryan had one uh, recently. Big E. You know, they've all had chances to say something. And he's been go- he's been going really well. Even Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens um, with Paul Heyman on talking smack, excellent stuff. Yeah, which makes you wonder why they don't give him any time on the actual show, like Raw. Because yeah, I mean, I mean, to yeah, be Bobby honest, Nash is a champion. It could be a sign of things that changing. But I've I've always I've always said this, and I'll continue to say it. There are there's not enough TV time, and there's far too many wrestlers. Yeah. They've got far too many wrestlers and not enough time. So you're only you know you're only ever really gonna see um, the same kind of people, the same guys going in and out, in and out, in and out, and then you're rarely gonna get to see a glimpse of of, of other people. But um, you know, giving them a chance on on the stick and seeing what people can do. Um, you know, I I was a fan of the iconic, so it's um, it's a, you know. it's a really good promo. Does she deserve a shot? Probably. Has Charlotte had one too many shots? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we uh, hop in our time machine? Um, just that I'm disgusted that this shameful picture um, has come to light <laughs> of a surfaced of myself with um, Tony Khan, uh, Sunset Skip. I don't know, you know, where you got it from or what your contacts are, but I'm not happy. <laughs> but, you know, 
it, 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 I, I don't want it to be every week we have to come on and say something negative about AEW, yes, but they need why, to pick... You know, I said Eddie Kingston cut a good promo. You know, there was some good stuff about Dynamite, you know, like... But how is it? How is it that you've got your TV title ladder match on your pay per view, and then you've got your TV title match on your weekly TV show? Surely it should have been the other way around. They should have had on Dynamite. They should have had the ladder match for who's going to get the title shot, and then the title shot should have been on the pay per view. But the title holder was in the cinematic street fight. Oh, that fucking thing! Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but you couldn't, you couldn't really go with it. Like it's, I mean, we knew a company that used to do weird stuff like this and put their title matches on free TV. Um, we're about to head there now. Well, actually, we're staying in Jacksonville, aren't we, which Jordan? Is, which, we're staying in the <laughs> cursed city of Jacksonville, Florida, <laughs> <laughs> because on March eighteenth, two thousand and one, WCW the Oh man, I miss this company so much. Um, presented Greed, a pay per view, a new name for a pay per view, which used to be uncensored, but they decided to go with Greed. They were in Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Center, uh, the Jacksonville uh, Memorial Coliseum. Oh, the Coliseum, sorry. Um, the Memorial Coliseum. In front of uh, 5,030 fans. I mean, you could see it in some of the wide camera shots, empty seats everywhere. Um, and this is this is one that hurts the most. Fifty thousand on the pay per view buys. Fifty thousand. Yeah. Well, what we what basically what we've got to look at as well. March the eighteenth, two thousand and one. Right. This is three days before the final thunder, and yeah. eight days before the final nitro. Yeah. This is five days away from when WWF bought WCW. Well, this so- is it. WCW is a mess at this point. Um, they have, ta- uh, t- uh, was it AOL Time Warner who had taken over Turner Sports and Turner everything else, no longer wanted wrestling on their show. So they cancelled WCW on TNT and TBS. TNT, there you go. Another tie in there with uh, Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, And they booted it off the air, and that essentially made it worthless to any other buyers apart from Vince. Or, you know, someone else who had TV time. Yeah. And, yeah, WCW's a mess at this point. Uh, Russo and Bischoff, long gone. And uh, our three stooges on the booking team, uh, Red Rooster, Johnny Ace, and the geezer who is known for a Jim Ross impression, Ed Ferrara. See, Ed, Ed Ferrara. Booking team. Yeah, I mean, Ed, Ed Ferrara, I've got a DVD and it's it, it's Ed, it's a shoot interview with Ed Ferrara and Vince Russo. And it's those two guys sitting down talking about this, that and the other because they were both together in WWF at one point. Yeah. They were both together excuse me, in WCW at one point. This is a time, literally, like, they are fucking a dead donkey at this point. WCW is, is fucked at the minute. It's literally on the... But, you know, it really annoys me because I still think to this day that, that Vince McMahon and WWF really kind of could have made more of buying WCW. They could have let they could they could have just carried it on under the proviso that 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 Shane was the owner and that it was two rival companies and could have kept a feud going for for year for years. With that you'd have had to have taken over either Raw SmackDown, which were both successful. Um you didn't have any scope for another show at the time there was nowhere else to put another show they weren't freely being offered you know i mean they have three shows on tv now but it was a long this is a long time ago and a lot of those big names from wcw at the time even at this time of greed some of those big names under contract couldn't be bothered to show up for work they weren't injured 
they were just they could stay at home and collect checks. So yeah, so so, so we're, who are we talking? We're talking Hogan. We're talking. I think Hogan uh, might have been released by this point. I'm not sure. Well, at least Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Goldberg. Goldberg, yeah, uh, Nash. No, Hall had gone, I think, as well. Right. Hall had been fired. Um, but there's Nash. You know, Sting. Sting would show up on the final night of Nitro. Um, Goldberg yeah. and Nash wouldn't. Um, I think they'd also got rid of Bret Hart at this point. Bret was gone. Yeah, Bret as well. But I mean, there's so much, so much to talk about with this show, and so many weird things. Like, and this is this show. Like, I watched it and it was bad. And I'm, you know, I know you. We spoke about it already. You said you didn't mind it. I, I, I at times. At times, I, I didn't mind it, but I think that's maybe because I watched it straight after I watched AEW Revolution. So um, it's probably compared to that, it was fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, so the wrestling wasn't bad. Um, you know, that that's another thing. I mean, we're talking about AEW earlier, and now we're talking about WCW. The quality in the wrestling, like when I was watching AEW, like a lot of it was showing a lot of light, like a lot of soft hits, a lot of... Things that just didn't oh, we get, look we like get this here as well. Oh, we do. We do. I'll tell you what. There's um, Rick Stein is fucking terrible for some of it on here as well. But and I, I genuinely, generally think he's quite good. But it's like, you know, no one really showed up to work on this on this pay per view. I think and there the was probably one did... or two matches where they did where people showed up to work. Yeah, and that was yeah. fine. Um, there will be pretty much no commentary quotes here. Because it's Tony Schiavone and Scott Hudson, and they're not—they're not there to have fun. Then it's no, no, there's no real back and forth. There's no banter. No, it's terrible. It was—it was the the commentary was fucking non-existent. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into our first match because this is this is something. Well, else. we 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 start off where it says if it's and Tony Schiavone says if it's professional wrestling, then it must be greed. Was the was the tagline that he said when he's coming in? So he's I don't know what he. Main event is. Yeah, well, this is the thing, man. It's like there's a lot of um, sly digs and that going on, you know. And it's, I mean, this it, this event is fucking mental. But and but this as well, this event is WCW's last ever pay per view, isn't it? Yeah, and this is what I said. Like it's it's not a, it's a bad pay per view, but it's a little bit sad as well. It is sad. It, it, it was. Watching it, I was thinking, actually, fucking hell, this is the last time we ever get to see a WCW pay-per-view. It's the, la- yeah. the last ever one. Um, let's let's get to it. I mean... Get into the first match, baby. Yeah, it's in the brightest pink trousers I've ever seen, Kwee Wee. Um, you're going to hear this a lot tonight on this one. Kwee Wee is fucking jacked. Bro, um, it's, and we meant I, I voice messaged Chris earlier today <laughs> because it seems like on this show everyone is juiced. It's uh, it's clear there's no wellness policy no or way. drug testing going on whatsoever by this point. Everybody is ripped, and Kiwi is no uh, is no different. Kiwi he's taking on Jason Jet, otherwise known as Easy Money. He was in ECW, I think, for a while. Um, and the booth here is putting over Jet really hard. Like they're, you know, saying he upset Alex Wright on Thunder. And as they're doing that, he botches running the ropes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like that. I'm sitting there like this straight away. Yeah, you know, my hands are on my head, and I'm like, oh fuck me, man. I think I think <laughs> Matthew probably could have done a whole episode of Botchamania on this pay-per-view. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, there's no denying that uh, on that one. Um, Fucking bullshit. Queeby goes for a suicide dive through the ropes, and Jet just moves out of the way, and Queeby just takes this really awkward side bump onto the mat. Onto the mats. It was fucking hilarious, man. And <laughs> and this is yeah, know, this is where I got a little bit sad for for WCW because this is what they're putting out. I I watched I watched the first half of this pay per view twice. Because when we watch these pay-per-views and these events, we've got to make notes on them as well. So we've got to, you know, have our pads out and, you know, be um, 
be writing our notes and you know that's it so but the first time i watched the first half uh i was doing some cooking and i like add the 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 pad the the you know the tablet on the side and i was watching it and watching what was going on and it was just <laughs> it was weird because i was watching it, i was like Oh, fucking hell, I've got to watch all this again and make notes. Like, <laughs> it's just some of it was really bad. Some of it was really bad, but some of it was quite good. And, you know, the fact that I've I watched up to, I think, uh, about, an, about an hour or so in uh, twice, which was, wow. which was great. I mean, to be honest, after watching some of the matches we've seen over the past week, I would be clamoring and chomping at the bit for a best of seven series between Kiwi and Jason Jett. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a scare. Um it was a re- sort of like a power bomb reversal from the top rope into Hurricane Rana. And it looked like someone was about to get hurt. Yeah, there was a couple of moments in this pay-per-view like that where I think someone nearly got hurt. Um, for some reason there's two nut shots in this match um from Jet both times. Yeah, this is a very, you know, bad way to start your show. Two low blows. Um, a low blow should be something, you know, in one match maybe two. But oh, it's two. littered through through this pay per view as well, bro. Yeah. There's nut shots galore. Uh, Jet does his very best Eddie Guerrero impression. He shushes the crowd and then lays on the floor in the hope that Queeri goes to the top rope and. You know, tries a, a move and he does. It's just, it's really shit, man. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I was watching that and I was laughing because it was, it was hokey, and oh man, he hits a, this his move. It's a, like a fall away sort of release suplex thing called the crash landing. He wins the match, but I mean, they were putting him over like he was, you know, prime Mysterio or something. I was I was wanting Kiwi to win this match. Partly for his hair, partly for his trousers, partly for the amount of Ico Pro bars and shakes that he had clearly consumed. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he he looked like um, he looked like an anime character, didn't he? He looks like fucking yeah, the the hair thing and the the super wild pink yeah um, trousers, like just yeah. Before we get into our next match, um. Let's remind people where we are. You know, you know, you can see us on YouTube. Like, you know, if you're watching us, you've seen that incredible photo of Chris and Tony Khan. <laughs> you know, you're already watching on YouTube. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts. You know, and a ton we're, of we're, other Chris knows. We're, we're everywhere, man. You know, you know, our step up, fam. We're, so, we're, if you if you're watching us here, it's YouTube. It's Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. Catch us on Twitter and Instagram, which is down below. You would have seen um, at Chat Grapple Pops on Twitter and Instagram. You can catch us on uh, Podbean, Spotify, Deezer, Castbox, uh, Listen Notes, Stitcher, uh, iHeart Radio. Um, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you listen to your podcasts, you will hear myself and the magnificent JB and Chat Grapple and Cheap Pots podcast. We will be there. You will be able to find us. Remember, you can you know go back in our YouTube or any of our you know podcast sort of media, and you can catch those interviews that we've had. You know, we want to thank you know Sonny Ono, Anthony Corelli and Mike Drosy for coming on and talking about their experiences. We had some really good fun chatting with all three of those guys. We would, I'd, I'd really want people just to go back as well, because YouTube's been doing some funny things recently, taking away views, taking away subscribers, um, inactive subscribers. Apparently if people aren't like it, they can watch all of our videos, but if they haven't liked a video or whatever, apparently they're getting taken away. So like, in, you know, it seems a bit weird, but we've got, quite a few videos now i mean this is episode 29 we've got quite a few special episodes like the end of year the beginning of year episode we've also got the three shoot interviews that we've done with superstars and people from the wrestling business our last one was obviously sunny ono that was a great one but 
people go back and listen because there's a few videos, some of our really greatest episodes that I thought like WrestleMania 11, some of the Royal Rumble ones, some of the earlier WCW episodes, they really haven't got the views that some of of our other videos have got. And it just seems a little bit weird that like, you know, one video can get two, three, four thousand views or whatever. And then another video gets like, 300 views or something so it's just really weird so if if anyone's listening to this and they haven't maybe listened to our earlier stuff go through and listen we've literally got you know we were talking about it and you you could listen to us straight for three days probably not that you'd want to but you know there's enough content we've got enough content on there for you to listen literally for days so please go back and check out our archives and um, we need those subscribers. So we say it every single episode, but touch the fucking bell, man. Touch the bell. Do it. Do it now. Don't leave it. Don't wait. If you're watching this video, touch the bell. Do it. No, don't do it later. Do it now. Quickly. There you go. Touch it. Lovely. So we'd like to thank people for some reason putting us in the Apple podcast charts in but wrestling podcast charts in both america and the uk like fantastic we're so, really happy like i say two fucking jabronis man just talking about <laughs> wrestling we love it we appreciate it and we're gonna keep doing it you know and we, we just we we appreciate the love we really do so don't forget to hit those bells and touch the fucking bell touch it now now this this match <laughs> It's the Cruiserweight Tag Team Title Tournament Final. That's a yes. mouthful. Um, yeah, dude. Involving Primetime Elite Skipper. Now, Primetime Elite Skipper, for those of you who don't know or you know didn't know he was in WCW, he is the guy that walks the top of the six-sided cage in TNA and does the Hurricane Rana from the top of that cage in, I think it was Turning Point 2004. Yeah. Yeah, it's an incredible bit of video. you know. But Elite Skipper was part of Team Canada in WCW before was, any yeah. of that. He yeah. teams up. He teams up with Kid Romeo. Who? Wow, this guy's Jack too, man. <laughs> Bro, to the fucking gills, man. This guy is. He He's is about to burst. He is literally about to burst his skin. He is so ripped, so jacked. Um, you know they show, they show a little bit of footage of the of the cruiserweight tag team tournament that's happened before. So they show you some of the rounds before, and actually AJ Styles. Was it was in this oh, tournament yeah. um, with with I can't remember who was with. You know what I sort of Paris, Paris Air, Rose, Air Paris, and someone Air like Paris. That. That's it. Yeah. So um, you know AJ Styles was in it. So you can catch them if you if you go to the network and you look at the earlier episodes of Nitro or Thunder or whatever uh, to see this tournament. You'll see AJ Styles, a young AJ. Um, yeah, Kid, uh, Enix Skipper and Kid Romeo against. A masterless Rey Mysterio Jr. and Billy Kidman. Now, before we get on to <clears throat> the match itself, <clears throat> excuse me. How hard did WCW drop the ball with Ray? Oh, dude. I mean, first of all, he should never have had his mask taken off ever. Point I mean, one. that was Kevin. That yeah. was Kevin Nash, right? Yes, Kevin Nash's brilliant idea. Um, you know, but Ray, like Ray, Ray. I'm not being funny. My man was on the fucking Ico Pro too. Look at him right there. He's, he's jacked pretty, as fuck. Cut. Yeah. Um, he's fucking jacked as fuck. Considering what WWE did with Ray and putting him in the main event and making him a world champion a couple of times over at least. Um, yeah, that mask, the mask thing would have sold so much more in WCW. They, you know, again, not pushing him further up the cards. Just, wow. Ball dropped. Seriously, I've I've got some um, I've got some Rey Mysterio memorabilia that I will show on a later show. It's not finished yet, but um, yeah, I remember you telling me about this. I, I, I've I'm getting it framed. It's getting sorted, so uh, that is going to be coming on a later episode. But I love a bit of Rey. I love Rey Mysterio, um, and yes, they dropped the ball massively. He can work his ass off. I'm really not a fan of uh, of his son at the moment. Oh, Dominic. Okay. Oh, Dom. I'm I'm really not. I'm sorry, man. All right. Yeah, your dad's Rey Mysterio, but sometimes some people just ain't ain't made for it, bruv. You get what I'm saying? They just 
I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I think I need to see more of his stuff. I need to see more of his work yeah. then to just Gosh. like, you know, yeah, could he get yeah. could he get better? Or are we gonna, you know, is he gonna be better than you know your Eric Watts or your you know stuff? David like, Flair. David you, Flair. You know, yeah. what's his name? Um, fucking Jared. Is it Jared? Um, Garrett Bischoff. Bischoff. Garrett. That's it. Garrett Bischoff. Uh, you know, it, it's one of them ones where just because your dad's a wrestler sometimes doesn't mean, or if your dad's in wrestling, doesn't always mean that you're going to be a good wrestler, unfortunately. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to get some of that Von Eric, you know, luster to go with it. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, maybe they don't want none of that because... No, they don't want... They don't want... They literally don't want the smoke, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um... This match, um, it's all right. Lots of head scissors to start with. You know, it was always going to be that. It was going to be quick. It was going to be, you know, fast-paced stuff. I really like Kidman's baseball slide on uh, Skipper. Skipper's not hanging around waiting for it. They time it really well. Yeah. And that's something that we could go on and on about. We do it. We seem like we do it every other week where eight people are waiting for someone to jump. Well, I, I think we mentioned this year, we talked about the ladder match. Um, the ladder match was fucking awful for that. People just standing there waiting for spots. But the one of the worst things I've seen over this last weekend gone was one particular spot where Chris Jericho and MJF were on the outside of the ring and the Young Bucks were in the ring and they were going to do a double torpe suicido or whatever they fucking call it. And literally Probably MJF... Probably or something or other. You know. Oh, MJF and, and Jericho were literally... They turned round and then they walked back and it was so fucking... It was literally like they were standing there just looking at them, running towards them for ages and ages and just had to stand there like a couple of cunts waiting for a couple of cunts to come and just... You know, it was fucking awful. And when, you know, and this is, you know, whatever people want to say, I mean, Jim Cornette says what he says, but just because we agree with certain things doesn't mean we're like the biggest fucking Jim Cornette fans. But he's right at sometimes. Like, I hate the Bucks, man. Their matches are just so, like, choreographed, set up. They're just awful, and I hate it. And like we're saying, these these dives to the outside of the ring... They have to be done well. They have to be timed well. You can't just be standing there waiting because it it takes away the believability of wrestling. Because I'm telling you now, if you're standing there and someone's running towards you and you're having a fight with them and they jump out of the ring, you're going to fucking move out the way and they're going to end up smashing their head on the floor. You know, stupid. Something we brought up, you know, the how ladder matches are no longer fun. You know, just stop doing them for a while. Yeah, it, stop doing them for a while. Money. The the last innovation on anything of a of a ladder match was that money in the bank thing, and that was what WrestleMania twenty one when they did the first one. You you know what I really miss, and you know we've spoke about on another show with TNA and that where I said I'd take four or six, but the 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 ultimate X yeah where they had the two ropes that crossed oh, in the middle they have to of the hang ring it up or something. And they, they have it in the middle and then people can literally go on the two. There's like, you know, four ways into it. And they had Which the ladders and stuff. they had to hang the belt? Was that King of the Mountain? Yeah, King of the Mountain, oh, yeah. God. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, you know, but the Ultimate X was fucking great, man. You know, where they yeah. had the, the cross, you know, the cross wires and that with it in the middle. And you can't get your bigger men in the match for that sort of thing. You can't have Otis hanging. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, obviously. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you know, they had fucking Hernandez doing it, though, in, okay. in TNA. I swear they had him doing a couple of them. But, um, you know, it. They, the thing is, what the, the problem with the way wrestling's going is because people kind of, like, like, people know about wrestling now. Yeah. Like, it is literally just a fucking spot fest. And it's and it's literally like they had. It's like they no one really. Well, I say no one. People do care about stories, and you know it just seems like, especially again, we're going back to AEW that their matches don't really have no story. It's just they're all just spot fest. So you're just waiting for someone to do a spot, and then waiting for another spot, and then waiting for another spot, and waiting for another spot. And it's like, 
all right, fine. That's great. Cool. If that's what you want, fine. But the longevity of that is literally fucking minute. Well, because... we'll, see, we'll see how well they do after they after they no longer have to compete with NXT on a Wednesday night. You know, I'm full. I, I think to for it to be any sort of success, they need to be breaking over 1.3 million every week. Dude, Impact Wrestling broke two million last week. Did it? Yeah, that's more than fucking it done it it done the rating of like one point four or something, and mm. that was like two million two million. So more people watched Impact Wrestling than watched NXT and AEW put together. Dixie Carter's flicking her bean right now, bruv. She's flicking her bean right now. Fucking yeehaw. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> that's an image you won't get out of your head quick. Um. But you know, fuck. And that's real. I'll put that on the screen if I can find it. Yeah, yeah. Put that up just in case we get someone crying about it. Um, and we will. Poor kid Romeo at times does not look set, look like he knows what he's doing in this tag match. He's on the apron a lot to begin with, and Bless looks him. a little lost. Yeah. He doesn't know when to get involved, and like Ray and Kidman are you know, double teaming prime time a fair bit. Yeah. <laughs> Skip and kid Romeo is just standing there. On the apron, like, what do I do? But he definitely looks the business, man. Yeah, of course he does. He, he definitely, I mean, you know, Kid Romeo is fucking, he, like, he's ripped to but shreds. Yeah, he, show, he shows good fire in the ring. And that's, yeah. I suppose that's the important thing. Um, the match does kick up a notch. You know, we get some dives. We get some, you know, I think we get a shooting star from Kidman to the outside. All pretty, like, again, but. You know the finish. I, I really like the finish. Well, it was like a, you know, this was one of the matches that was was pretty good. Yeah. Um. It's. Yeah. I mean, it, I I thought maybe the people that won it wouldn't have won it, but it was it was a good finish. Um. Yeah. Rey Mysterio goes for a, a springboard moonsault, and uh, is it Kid Romeo catches him? Yeah. Yeah. Kid Romeo he catches, catches him. him. And. Yeah. Drives him into the mat like almost like head first, and he he does like yeah he he pulls him down, tucks his like, head under, yeah. and then drops him. Yeah, it's and good. Uh, there's your champions, your cruiserweight tag team champions, Kid Romeo and Elix Skipper at prime time, and of course Kid Romeo is going to gyrate in the ring as yep. he's celebrating. You know, drops his uh, trunks a little bit there to show off a little man bit. Was, man was moving like Sunny Kiss, bruv, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. He was gyrating like Sunny Kiss there, bro. You know, and then they they give it a little bit of the yeah, they, know, they, they, they yeah the weird sort of pump dance thing from pump dance. Yeah, from, this is yeah, two thousand and one. Yeah, yeah, we'll allow it. <laughs> Buff Bagwell has a cameraman with him in the back. He goes to see Ric Flair, Jeff Jarrett, and Road Warrior Animal. I have no idea what they're talking about here. I yeah. couldn't figure it out. The, the, the I mean, cocaine's a hell of a drug. There, there, there's um, there's a lot going on. Uh, they're talking about them being the elite crew. There's like the Magnificent Seven. Uh, the they elite. were talking I love the it. elite, you know, the elite crew. And this is in fucking Jacksonville, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you've got the Magnificent Seven. You've got the the factions in WCW at this time where you had. The you had Ric Flair who was the CEO and you got all his cronies. Oh, what a what a time to be in WCW, man! Like that just that just screamed out crazy. It must have been mental, mate. And then on yeah. the other side, you've got basically the rest of the boys. And you know, you had Hugh Morris. They talk about it in the Hugh Morris match, saying he's like a locker room leader. Him and Conan have become like locker room leaders against the 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 faction, the Magnificent Seven and all this kind of thing. So, which is probably Buff Bagwell, Jeff Jarrett, Ric Flair, Animal, Scott Steiner, you know, uh, Rick Steiner. Uh, you know, so you've got a, a group of guys oh, who... Yeah, Luger and, well. and Lex Luger, yeah. yeah. So you had the Magnificent Seven who were basically taking over. But, I mean, storyline-wise as well, this was a fucking... WCW was a mess right here. Like, yeah. everything was all over the shop, man. Speaking of messes, um, <clears throat> or shit shows, as we're you know, going to 
use it use its professional name here. Yeah. Again, you can tell the drug test is non-existent because um, <laughs> Stacey Kieber introduces her her charge, Sean Stasiak, and he is fucking bursting as well. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah. His promo skills on... are, his promo skills are non-existent, which makes this like I'm laughing through this whole thing. Oh, it's great. It's a, it's a really shit Rick Rude knockoff. Like, like a lot of people say, you know, when you order from, you know, what is it? Wish. Amazon, when you order from Wish, yeah. 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 <laughs> when you order Rick Rude from Wish, you get Sean Stasiak. <laughs> because he actually calls people hogs, doesn't he? He calls, yes, them, he calls hogs. them hogs and stuff. Um, I mean, and it's ironically later on, I didn't, I've never seen, I'd never seen this show. I've never watched Greed before. I, my sort of watching of WCW disappeared a little bit around about 2000 so 2001 wcw like yeah just i hadn't had got around to watching this stage that's taking on bam bam bigelow who i'm pretty sure is not on the juice um no bam yeah he's all natural baby bam bam bigelow the man that main evented wrestlemania um gets to work with sean fucking stasiak in the it's third fucking... match on WCW Greed. Not um, only does he get to work with him, he gets the fucking job to him. Yeah. Um, Stasiak <laughs> does a bit of stalling. This is, I've already got it here. It's really bad. Um, there is literally nothing to this match. There's a couple of bam bam headbutts. You know, um, Stacy gets up on the apron, undoes her hair, and does that bit. That was her gimmick, really, wasn't it? She would get up and shake it a little bit. She was the legs. She was the legs of WCW, as she was coined. Was that and the, the term? Yeah. <clears throat> and the the legs of WWF, because apparently she had really long legs, but it's just uh, she chucks some Keebler in it. She chucks some hairspray or something to Stasiak. He sprays Bam Bam in the face, and then hits him with a rude awakening. I'm like, you fucking dickhead. Yeah, is it- <laughs> you are a knockoff of Rick Rude, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> He hits a rude awakening and gets the win. And this is where I've got Bam Bam main event at WrestleMania, man. How are you doing him like this? Yeah. How how you going to do it? Ain't nobody got time for that. You know what I mean? Um, Bam Bam selling like a fucker as well outside. Yeah. And he goes to give him a fucker and stuff. Yeah. (laughs) He goes to give him a picture as well. He's like, yeah, do you want a picture? (laughs) Yeah. Stasiak and Stacey or, you know, whatever. They, They kiss like in the ring afterwards. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah. Get, just get this off my telly. Um, backstage, we've got Ernest the Cat Miller with who I later figure and find out is Miss Jones. I didn't know who it was in this one. In this bit where I do later on find out it's Miss Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the cruiserweight champs celebrate with a hug and then realize they're getting too close to each other with no shirts on. So they just like shake hands. <laughs> they do the whole no homo shit because it was like 2001. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose yeah, that would be yeah. Um, next up, it's a, next up, it's another tag team match. It's uh, Team Canada, Lance Storm, and that Canadian monster, Mike Awesome. I didn't know he was Canadian. Yeah. Um, yeah. Taking on these locker room leaders, as we've now figured out, Hugh Morrison. <laughs> oh, it's um. But I tell you what, Lance Storm and Mike Awesome are jacked. To fuck, man. They're both oh, awesome. In particular, is yeah huge. And again, like it, it's really making it, it well to a point. It was making my decision difficult on the ICO Pro Award, but then it. It's and not then there was a clear, yeah, yeah. And then there was a clear winner. They were just teasing all these yeah. guys. They were just teasing that they were in the running, you know. And yeah. there's only one that really comes close to the winner. But then when you see the winner, you're like, oh yeah, fucking, you know multiple time winner right here uh, this is a pretty standard tag match um they i don't know it falls apart as well because they hot tag it to k dog and then they <laughs> cut him off they cut off his hot tag after about three moves and i'm like oh this isn't this is a lukewarm tag it's i don't know like conan bumps for a drop kick that doesn't touch him like yep i'm just there's a couple of them the match ends up dragging, which is annoying because I like Lance Storm and Mike Awesome. Yeah. And it drags and they spend forever getting heat on Conan, which is, you know, 
nobody cares. <laughs> it's the... Fucking Max Moon, isn't it? Yeah, the original Max Moon. Um, Hugh Morris tags in, and again, nobody cares. But the match has, the match has died a death here. Um, we get a running awesome bomb for the win, though, which is, you know, awesome. So, That's great. I mean, it's a, a, a modified version of the Razor's Edge. Yeah, a running version of the Razor's Edge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got these weird, like, backstage hidden camera thing with uh, Dusty and Dustin Rhodes, and Dusty gets some burritos delivered. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> D- Dustin goes to him, yeah, shouldn't you be getting ready or prepping for the match? He's going, yeah, I got some training. I got some special training materials coming. <laughs> and a guy walks in with a massive tray of like 50 burritos. And yeah. it's because it's the whole pucker up and kiss the ass match. So he's just trying to get, get some gas so <laughs> whoever's going to kiss his ass, he can fart in their face. It's like unbelievable. Um buff Bagwell with the cameraman again with Rick Steiner this time, our US champion Rick Steiner uh, he, Buff calls the, he calls themselves the elite which makes me laugh because that's what another group of people call themselves Yeah, <laughs> um, oh man if only if only fucking Buff Bagwell was all elite, if yeah. only <laughs> Poor Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare yes they're good in the ring and they look Look really good and stuff, but I don't think anyone's given them any fucking promo training. Oh no! It's and, so and again, bad. I mean, I mean, I Sean O'Hare is ripped to shreds. Oh, Sean O'Hare was a was a runner up for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, even Chuck Palumbo at this point, this is before he married um, Mister Ass. Uh, you know, he, oh, I don't he, think they got married. I think it got stopped, didn't it? Did it got stopped? Yeah. Yeah. To just think, yeah, three minute warning and. Eric Bischoff stopped it just before it was about to oh, get going. It's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sean O'Hare. He is, again, another one bulging out of his skin. But they cut the worst promo I've ever seen. These are the champs as well. They could go in the ring, clearly. They could do, mm. do their moves and stuff and look really good. But yeah, they, they need to go to promo class. Cruiserweight title up next. And this is great. Sugar Shane Helms with the Sugar Babies. Yeah. <laughs> His little dance. Not, the sugar, not to be mistaken with the, the British uh, R&B group, the Sugar Babes. No, this is the Sugar Babies. It's not the Sugar <laughs> Babes. I'll put a picture of the Sugar Babes on yeah. the screen for anyone in America who doesn't know the Sugar Babes. Um, it's not them. It was the Sugar Babies. Because at this time... Shane Helms was in three count because was, three count yeah. was still, they were part of the cruiserweight tag team tournament as a two man team. There was a little, there was a build up to this where I think Shane Helms turned on them. Here's, here's a, here's another thing. One of the sugar babies looked a lot like so Val. She did the ginger one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was so, Calvin. No, it, it might not be, but it, I thought it was for a minute when I saw it. I was like, you know, it does like you know make your brain start questioning things. I think I think it's one of the Nitro girls. Probably, I yeah. think there there are a few of the Nitro girls. Um, yeah, I, I I can't remember her name. The ginger lass. Um, Oh man, I've got me cards. I've got me. I've got me it's, it's all right, man. Are you sure? Are you not that bothered? No, I, I wouldn't be either. I just <laughs> wanted to get me cards out. Sugar Shane, uh, Helms and his sugar babies. Uh, Shane is taking on the uh, Chavo Guerrero, our cruiserweight champion. And we got some really nice chain wrestling to start this. Good match. This was, oh, excuse me. This was probably the match of the card. Were well, you thinking I would have said. all elite wrestling again just then for a second? Yeah, and I just, it popped into my head and I yeah. just snoozed off. Um, th- this was probably the match of the uh, match of the night, I would have said. Oh, see, my match of the night's coming up, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> I didn't have a match of the night on this. So I just I wasn't really into it. 
the, I mean, but the, no, this was this was a bit of fresh air. This was because a little bit, yeah. But the crowd hated it. Oh, the, yeah, the crowd really weren't buying it. But I think that was because, I mean, they, they weren't. Just they weren't. They weren't yeah, there was no. The, the, I mean, even Scott Hudson notes that there's not a lot of high flying in this, and the crowd was sitting on their hands or something. It's a shame because it's not a terrible match. It's just not super spectacular. And but as wrestling goes, it was good. Yeah, as wrestling goes, it was just fine. But we got boring chants as well, which you know, a little disrespectful yeah. to a match that isn't that boring or boring at all. Um, again, yeah, it just didn't really strike a chord, but even with me, but I wasn't going to sit there and go, oh, this is boring. Like, I still sat there and watched it and <laughs> didn't complain. Um, Shane Helms reverses a vertebraker. I think it's a vertebraker. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the vertebraker, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah um, Charvo's going for a vertebraker and Shane reverses it and he wins the Cruiserweight title and he celebrates with the Sugar Babies. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, he looks weird in what he's dressed as well because they even mention, oh, he's wearing trunks, you know. He was always wearing like the three count trousers or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, we know Shane Helms is a really good friend of the Hardy Boys. Uh, you know, literally grew up coming up in the business and that together. Um, you know, he's got the he, he's got that connection. It's weird because I mean, what what were the Hardys doing in two thousand and one? They were huge stars at this point. Uh, two thousand and one, they did TLC two, didn't they? Was that what? Yeah, what is uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania seventeen? Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Shane Helms as well because he uh, he was the one that gave Molly Holly the news that she's been inducted into the Hall of Fame. I saw that clip uh, online this week. It was yesterday for us, but whenever you listen to this, you know. Was... Yeah, yeah. And they were both really like, they were both quite emotional about it. And it was, yeah. Good I like see, Molly Holly. Good to see that there's still nice things in wrestling, you know. Yeah, man, I, I like Molly Holly. I thought she was good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, uh, Shane celebrates with his sugar babies, uh, Jeff Jarrett and Ric Flair saying they won't be kissing on the ass tonight. And then there's a promo from Booker T saying, she's basically saying he's going to win and not to hate the player, hate the game or whatever like his catchphrase was. <laughs> it's a really bad um, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we missed as well, though. Hurricane Helms, his finishing move was called the Nightmare on Helm Street. The Nightmare on Helm Street. Yeah, that was a nice promo. Fucking great. Um, Oh man, this is great because the tag team title match is up next, and this is my match of the night. Um, <laughs> we get it's Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell, totally buff as they call themselves. They come out, they cut a pretty average promo with a couple of funny bits in there. You know, they call them rookies and stuff like that. And dude, I'll tell you what, right? Buff Bagwell is is ripped. He's he's more ripped than Luger, a bigger than Luger at this point as well. Yeah, I mean, His Luger, shoulders Luger's jacked. Yeah, Luger's jacked. I mean, but fucking Buff Bagwell, his sh his shoulders, yeah, and and the top bit of his eye, like he they were checking the, themselves out in the big screen, you know. And Buff was just puffing himself out, you know. He was like for me. Buff Bagwell is number two. He's the he gets the silver. Oh, I thought Sean O'Hare was going to get the silver, but oh, uh, Sean, I mean, to, but they're, they're definitely. It, I mean, no one cares who won silver, do they? No, I mean, it was Sean, it was between Sean O'Hare, Buff Bagwell, and then them two, uh, you know, are a, and a two and a three. But yeah. the winner is clearly the winner, yeah. <laughs> and I think anyone who regularly listens to us and watches us will know who's going to win this. <laughs> Palumbo and O'Hare come out. Luger accidentally nails Bagwell with the forearm. We get two Sean Ton bombs. Yep. Not Swanton, Sean Ton. Yep. And um, there's a three count. It's a squash. I did look this up. It is a squash. I looked this up and um, <clears throat> Buff and Luger didn't want a job. So WCW or the guys who were obviously it's probably the booking team or whoever insisted that they were going to do the job tonight. So they figured they would just work quick, get it out of the way. Well, if you, if you want to listen to another 
uh, story from the amazing Sonny Ono talking about Buff Bagwell not <laughs> wanting to do the job. You can listen to our last episode, which was a shoot interview with Sonny Ono. And he talks about a, a great story when uh, Ernest the Cat Miller had a match at Hogs Wild against Buff Bagwell and Buff didn't want to do the job. And they He's ended up four. in a little... Yeah. yeah, you know, they had ended up in a little tussle. But yeah, I mean, it was... It, it was weird because the, the promo they did before the match in the ring lasted about five times longer than the match. Yeah. Just, yeah, I just didn't get it. Like, But yeah, I did. I figured I'd do my homework on that and they just didn't want to do the job. But when they were told they had to, they thought they'd take the piss and work a really short match and then stay in the ring until after the video promo of Scott Steiner calling DDP well, well crash. Yeah, but the, but this is the thing I've got written in my notes. Um, there we go. Um, back to Buff in the ring doing a Hogan versus Taker. Yeah, he's selling his neck. He did hurt his neck back in 97. You know, that is a thing. <clears throat> he was... Um, he was prone in the match. He really hurt his neck. He was out for a long time. But they, uh, yeah, they decided to go this way and same. But Luger was on the ground too. Luger was laying down as well. Which it, it, was, it was weird. They're just literally like, for the whole time, we had a Scott Steiner promo. We had um, a Kenyan versus the cat video. And then it goes back and Buff is still in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Luger's trying to help him up and he's going... My, my neck, my neck, you know, and we, I just had flashbacks of Hogan. I'm surprised lying Jack Tunney weren't there, yeah. Yeah, you know, I had flashbacks of Hogan lying in the ring after was being tombstoned by The Undertaker. Yeah, where you know? he, didn't, he didn't hit the chair, yeah. Yeah, you know, it was <laughs> unbelievable where fucking, you know, I just had flashbacks oh, yeah. of that and I've, I've got written in my notes, you know, back to Buff in the ring doing a Hogan versus Taker. You know, he's just, he's just literally milking it because they were dickheads. My expectations for this next match are incredibly low. It's Canyon against Ernest Cat Miller, who got Miss Jones with him. Yeah. Nothing against Canyon and Cat. It's just that the show is so bad at the minute that you just feel that the rest of the show is going downhill. Not a particularly bad match, though, I didn't think this. Um, yeah. The, the the plus points are no I, I didn't enjoy it so no the pl the plus points was Ernest the Cat Miller's beautiful kicks and dancing oh yeah and dancing yeah, yeah. um I don't know there was a top rope famouser from uh, from Canyon which was pretty good that was uh, it was okay but the match fell apart it just everything seemed out of time everything seemed all over the place dude just quickly at this point okay. So five days from, from this pay-per-view, WWF by WCW. Now, things like that, those kind of corporate mergers and, and those, like, they, like everybody must have known what was going on by this point, surely. I don't know. Like... I mean, it's, it, it's not like just five days out of the blue like down the down the road out of the blue it's like oh and now Vince McMahon just bought us they must the have month, been whispered beforehand when Bischoff's um consortium tried to buy it they they did know that WWF were interested in buying WCW like just that Bischoff and his crew had a better bid and a better you know sort of package to give to AOL Time Warner but yeah, I'm sure it would have got around. And once you realise that, you know, your main competitors could be buying you up, you'd want to look good, wouldn't you, on telly? It just, yeah, it, I mean, but it's like a lot, of, a lot of the guys just didn't give a fuck at this point. Like, it was, you know, it's like, right, let's just, we've got to go out and do this. Let's just go out and fucking let's do it, it and it then done, go yeah. home. Um, yeah, the... um. Cat hits a feliner, which is a good finish, a good kick. Um, it's two count. Uh, Canyon nails the referee for some reason. Like, there's no point to it. It's just a shit ref bump. Um, Miss Jones gets in and accidentally kicks Cat, uh, and then she kicks Canyon. Uh, it's, it's yeah, like 
watch it, man. Like, go back and watch it. You tell us how fucking terrible it is. Um, <laughs> cat, it's another feline of a three count. Oh, it's bad, man. It's so bad. Um, Canyon sort of gets his heat back, and then someone called Smooth or Smooth. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's the limo driver. He was a limo driver, and he protected someone last week or whatever. Yeah. Whatever, man. Yeah. Like, he makes a save. Um, quick, we move on from that, the better. Buff yeah, it's making bickering. me yawn, bro. So, yeah, just... <laughs> they're bickering about what happened in the match. And then we cut to you know, the American dream uh, munching his burritos. We had Buff and Luger arguing as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. They, they, they bickered about nothing. Oh, you know, you think I actually wanted to hit you with this? Oh, shit. I don't understand what who well we know who was booking it but sweet lord the computerized man of the 90s was part of the booking team yeah i mean it, they it's fucking him off in the 80s they they must have known what was going on they must have known that they, i mean they knew that the company was in trouble they knew there was there was people trying to buy it so a lot of people were just literally just fucking at times it felt like this show was just a huge fucking rib yeah it, it actually did. <laughs> US title matches next. It's Booker T and Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner is the champion. Um, Booker T is trying to bring it here, but Rick Steiner, he's staying in first gear. He's not. He's not pushing himself. And this is a. This is a, a sort of a key to the whole match. It's rest holds. It's it's shit and. Booker T hits an angle slam, which I find funny. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, Mickey J botches his own ref bump. Yeah, it's this match for me. I think it was, I don't know if Rick Steiner wanted to do this job either. Probably. It was, you know, it when he when he's got it's so for example, he's he's on he's on top of Booker on the floor with a headlock hold. You can tell. He's not, his fingers are like that, yeah? And he's just got his arms on him. You can tell that there's no, it it literally cannot be fucked. There's another bit, he's got his hands on his head. He's just doing that. He's got his hands on top of his head. He's just, ah, meh. He just, it was absolutely terrible. And I actually like Rick Steiner. And, you know, I, I thought this you was... You spoke about Rick Steiner glowingly, like in other shows, you know. 100%, man, you know, but he just could not be fucked. He really, he couldn't be bothered today. He was like, no, nah, fucking bollocks. In in the midst of the ref bump where Mickey J is now just holding his eye, like he can't yeah. see that one eye now, he's ref blindness. Um, holy shit, is Shane motherfucking Douglas... Yeah, your I pal. Think, I don't think they actually let him in. I think he probably just bought a ticket. <laughs> Jump the rail. He he taps Rick Steiner on the head with his cast. It's a love tap on the head. <laughs> hey, on the on the belt. And, uh, we get the bookend, which you know looks very very similar to a rock bottom, and we have a new US champion. Put it in the books. It's done. Yeah, it it was it was fucking terrible match. I feel you know I feel bad for Booker T because this was the only title that Booker hadn't won. Oh, it was the it was the Grand Slam night for Booker. It T. was the Grand Slam night for him. Rick Steiner didn't fucking turn up. Couldn't be bothered. Phoned it in. Booker was trying all he could to do what he could, but you know it was just oh, it was fucking horrible, mate. Um. We cut to the back with that dodgy cameraman. Buff is down. Luger's accusing yep. Animal. Yeah, Animal and Luger arguing. And, you know, this this, who, could, who have been, this, this could have been the Luger and Animal feud we were hoping for if WWF hadn't ruined it. Yeah, yeah. Bastards. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up it is the possible kiss my ass match. Pucker up and kiss match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jeff Jarrett and Ric Flair taking on Dustin Rhodes and my ICO Pro Award winner, Big Dust. Uh, Big Dust. It's not, I, it's not, he's not won the award. It's, Dusty gets an amazing pop though. It is Florida, it's his, his old territory. And the fans have fucking woken up. Yeah, they, um, 
they showed a video package as well of Dustin, Dusty, Ric Flair video package and Jarrett and that. Jarrett and dressed as what, Dusty, yeah. Oh, Jarrett dressed as Dusty was phenomenal, man. Like he was doing the 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 voice and everything. I mean, everybody has got a Dusty Rhodes impression. Everybody awesome. does one. You know, even on this podcast, we give it the American dream all the time. But it Jarrett's one was fucking great, man. Good. Um, do you reckon uh, Dusty got his uh, his burrito straight from Tijuana? Probably, because yeah. he's got the link there, isn't he? His old pal, yeah. He's got his old pal, Limo Rickshaw, probably bringing him across the border. <laughs> yeah, the pop for Dream is really, really cool, man. Like, I I don't know, we, we're a retro fucking show. So, like, <laughs> it's 2001. Dusty Rhodes is getting in the ring. You know, for some reason, Ric Flair's in there in this match as well. Rick in a Flair's fucking Hawaiian shirt a and dress shoes. Hawaiian shirt, yeah, and his yeah. dress shoes. Yeah. <laughs> It's not that it's not the first time he's done it. He loves to wrestle in a suit as well, he doesn't he? I didn't realize he was working this match. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking it, it's just a mess. But yeah, the fans are alive to it. And this is what I you know, this is what sort of it didn't make me sad, but like, I really like it was nostalgic, you know, awesomeness. Dusty tags in and the place goes mental. You know, he's it's you know, dusty man. Like, what can what can you say? It was great, man. It was um, we miss it as well at the beginning of this match. Jeff Jarrett comes in with his guitar, and it looks like um, Kenny Omega probably did the um, explosions on the top of his guitar. Well, I don't think so. I think the pyro for Jarrett was better than the. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was that. Well, no, I'm talking about on his guitar because oh, he had one on little guitar, bit on no, his guitar, the and then when right. he, yeah, but with the pyro behind him when he got in the ring was phenomenal. Yeah. Like it actually blew up more than the fucking explosions match at AEW. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um, the sad thing about this match, the saddest thing is that Dusty has probably got more charisma than ninety percent of the roster on this show combined. Oh, but, I mean, it was. When he gets it, when he got in the ring and he was doing like the yeah, strutting and the, it. you know, with flair and he was just doing the, you know, it was, he was just being dusty. It was, it was great. You know, like it was, yeah, it was, it was classic dusty roads. It was, you know, and, and the, the match was fucking terrible as well. Really. Um, it was really, really bad. I mean, the, garbage, the finish, the, the terrible roll up at the end as well. The the fucking cradle was it, awful. Yeah, it looks like it's a botched roll up. Um, yeah. And uh, Dusty gets the mic and says, "You know, you gotta pucker them lips and kiss my big white ass." Yes, I kiss my big white ass. And then, <laughs> he, I, you know, we've got Jarrett who comes in to try and save it, but then ends up getting held in the corner. And then you see the red rear end of Dusty Rhodes yeah. in his red wire fronts. He, poor Jarrett gets, a, you know, a stink face. And yep. I mean, i got to admit, Dusty had his jeans down for far too long, though, afterwards. He was sort of <laughs> he was... prancing about with his jeans around his knees. Even Dustin pulls his trousers up at one point, and he's like, for fuck's sake, Dad, pull your fucking trousers <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> oh, it was uh, funny. Did make me laugh. Yeah, it was, it was hilarious. Like, it was, you know, uh, the old nostalgia pop, which is, you know, still, still fun for everyone today. I did not realise they were still using Michael Buffer for main events in 2001. Would have he'd been the last one. Him, surely giving him a discount because we know how much he charges. And, man, that is just money down the drain. It, they By this point, they thought, fuck it, in for a penny, in for a pound, as we say. Well, we say in for a pound for, a, you know, several hundreds of thousands of pounds. <laughs> it comes to <laughs> Michael Buffer. Um, world title match obviously it's Michael Buffer so he's going to be introduced now main event it's DDP against Scott Steiner who's with Medeja who I mean don't see much of after WCW folds no 
she was taken out previously and that's why Scott Steiner was trying to find out who it was that took her out because yeah. it's probably the same person that was taken. And um, I don't think anyone ever finds out who it was. Maybe on Thunder or Nitro after they find out. But There, there, is, a, there is a side issue around this match is that in about two or three months before, after one of Scott Steiner's special shoot promos on Nitro, where I think he said that Diamond Dallas Page needed a sex change operation or something. They have a real fight backstage yeah. where Steiner beats the shit out of him. And he, he like tries to gouge at his eyes as well yes. because that's the story. Would yes. you pick a fight with the ICO Pro Award winner of the century, Scott Steiner? No, I mean, he's clearly the winner of our ICO Pro Award this week. And when you see the size of the bastard, you will see why he was the winner. Um, I've actually got if you can see behind me, I've got my, this is the TNA figure of Scott Steiner, Big Papa Pump. And it's when he's got his, the tattoo in the middle of his yeah, yeah. chest, but he's got the cowl there. And you can see on the back there, look at him. Yeah. He's a fucking beast. The geezer's is a monster. So, you know. Can you no, tell me I'm, how much you paid for that in percentages though? It Well, Two out of three times, I, I will buy it. And on the third time, you've got a 33 and a third chance of buying it. It's amazing. Um, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even DDP jokes about it in, in, in the vignettes of that. Like, he's like, yeah, he might be strong in that, but he's not exactly a mental heavyweight. Like, you know, mm -hmm. basically saying he's a dumbass. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they... <laughs> They obviously must have patched things up and got to a point where they could work professionally together. Um, well, maybe not, man. Maybe they just had to, you know? Yeah, maybe they just fucking they're still hate yeah. each other. Yeah. Uh, they do take it. It's a false count anywhere. This was mentioned on the show that Ric Flair, on a whim, decided to make it on the pre-show into a false count anywhere. No DQ main event for the title. Uh, they take it into the crowd. Scott Steiner steals some kid's crutch. <laughs> Which I thought was quite funny. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking crazy. And then the kid chucks the other one to DDP. Yeah. But we uh, that we see a surprise uh, WWF future wrestler in this. Well, this is the thing. After the uh, elbow through a table, DDP puts Stein through a table with a uh, with an elbow. Scott Stein like make their way back to ringside, and Scott Stein takes a weapon off of a fan at ringside, and he looks suspiciously like Paul London. It is Paul London, yeah. It's crazy. It's like, I don't know if he was at the power plant or whatever. There was a few power plant guys there. Yeah, maybe. You know, but uh, yeah, it was Paul London. He fucking gets a pie face. Yeah. And he takes like some kind of tray off him. It's like... Some sort of plastic, yeah. Yeah, it's like some kind of dish, some kind of plastic dish or tray. And it's, yeah, it's Paul London and he ends up getting pie faced by Steiner. Well, I mean, we know obviously Steiner has a habit of actually pie facing and grabbing real fans. So that's probably why they thought, let's put some wrestlers in the front because we know he loves to do it. So if he's going to do it, at least it'll yeah, be it's one it's of our shame, boys. Shame TNA didn't do that in India. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Ring Car King. They should have just filled it up with fucking boys at the front. Um, Done an AEW and had all the wrestlers in the front row wearing flame retardant suits. <sighs> oh, come on. The referee in a fucking hazmat. Don't, bruv. We've done... <laughs> I thought we were done with this. <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> we're not done. Um, Scott Steiner is uh, he's looking a little blown up. To be honest, he's moving in slow motion, like he's That's wading. Right. Through, he's wading through some English toffee. Yeah. Um, DDP's hitting the big moves, like you know DDTs and stuff. But a good old fashioned nut shot slows him down. And I couldn't tell you how many nut shots we had on this show. It was a plethora of nut yeah. shots. <laughs> he does hit a diamond cutter, but Rick Steiner, you know. Was hiding under the ring. Apparently, he didn't make his way down the ramp. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure he wasn't hiding under the ring. He's not fucking Hornswoggle. He was probably sitting next to Paul London. Yeah, he, but he was. Um, yeah, there's a. Yeah, Rick Steiner saves the count. They hit Page with the belt. He blades. 
and then he starts hitting the, using the the lead pipe, whatever it is, or the you know, it could be yeah. lead pipe, I don't know, across DDP's <laughs> ribs, and it just took me back to '97 and '98 when that's all he wore was rib tape. <laughs> Steiner using some long term book in there, like yeah. I'm not sure if he meant it. No, I don't think he. Did. <laughs> but he does put on the Steiner recliner and he does win the match. Still champion. <laughs> We get a quick recap of the show, like a video recap, and we're out and they say, see you on Nitro. But, you know, we know what's coming. Uh, Time Warner will cancel the WCW programming and the WWF will buy it up on the 23rd of March. It's, it's, it's mental, mate. Leads us to it's, that crazy um... episode of Raw and Nitro where you've got, you know, the simulcast thing where you've got... I mean, that was an amazing night, even as a, even as a as a youngster watching that. I remember watching. Yeah, where you got Shane Shane McMahon in the middle of the ring on Nitro. Yeah, oh, it's insane. Um, but yeah, that's that's greed. That's WCW yeah. greed, the final WCW pay per view ever. Ever. Yeah. Um, like I said, mad, bad, and a little bit sad. It was, man. It was because we, like, you know, we had Sonny Ono on and we were talking to him about the 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 golden era of WCW television from, you know, the 1993, 94, 95, 96, all the way through to, you know, 1999 even. You know, it, it's, it is sad because... I mean, it's sad when any of these companies go under. And this is why we get a little bit pissed off with AEW because we want there to be other places for the boys to go and work because having having the one big company of WWE, they're never going to have... Ne- they're never going to have enough TV time for everybody that wants to work there. You yeah. know, and it's it, there, there needs to be more places and more choices for where these guys are going to go. You know? Um, it's... Because also, if you have a falling out with WWE or for whatever reason... You, you need know, somewhere to go, yeah. You need somewhere to go. I mean, um, you know, it, it's, it is a bit, it's a bit sad. It is a, you know, where's Lars going to go now, you know? Oh, Sullivan. Yeah, where's They're he going to go? Gonna go back now? to the movies, is he? Is he? He's going to go. He's got nowhere to go now. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it is one of those things we do need to see. We want things to be better. We want to see a really good show and not a. Sh- uh, you know, a bang average, you know, or, you know, bad to average show being dressed up as a 10 by some goofy marks online. I'm just, you know, I, I said earlier to Chris, you know, in the message that I was sick of it, you know, put, put down your, you know, rose tinted glasses for 10 minutes, watch MJF get super kicked six times and tell me that that doesn't look shit. You can't do it. Yeah. It, it, it's I, I again I think that was a fucking rib as well because we've had in the news recently apparently that WWE are saying that they're banning the th- thigh slapping with the kicks. I th- I think that's a good idea. Well, the final straw was when there's a guy running the ropes and kneeing a flag, and doing a thigh slap when he's kneeing a flag. Yeah, yeah, bro. I go. mean, yes, certain times, but there's people, you know, you, I saw you put up a tweet. Haku never used to, or never needed to slap a thigh. Yeah. You never, either, ne- never needed you either it. sold the kick or you got kicked properly. <laughs> That's right. You either fucking sold it or you got booted in the face. Simple as that, you know? Yeah. Big shout out to Haku on that one. Yeah. He Big does. shout out to the man Haku, you know? Uh, King Haku, as he was once known. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you, you don't need to. If you throw it properly, you don't need to slap your thigh. But they, I mean, but the visual you know, impact when, alone should be enough. But but surely, I I think it's more of an issue of 
the move itself being overused rather than the slapping of the thigh in general. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? Well, I because mean, super, super kicks are drawn out anyway. They just so it should be a finisher. It should be a finisher. This is what why we spoke about a few. This is a few episodes back now. I think it was Stan Lane's thrust kick. Yeah, the better move, man. Like if you're using it as a setup, you know, don't super kick someone. Like thrust kick is just as good. Yeah, but, but th- when you've got people taking six super kicks. And then sell him for fucking 30 seconds or whatever, you know, yeah. or, you know. But then you've got other people taking one elbow to the face and then lying on the floor for 10 minutes in the ladder match. Um, but that's, but yeah, the problem. It, that's the problem with multi-man ladder matches as well. You can't all be in the ring at once. If there's six of you, you can't all be doing something. So you do end up laying at ringside for five minutes, waiting for your next spot. I mean... And that's fucked uh, up. Them, them ladder matches, though, with the six-man ladder matches that we were watching the tag team ones. You know, when we're talking about Edge and Christian, the Dudley boys, um, and the Hardys. You know, it it was those, those weren't like that because there was stuff going on outside the ring, and then you would only really have the focus point of the couple of guys in the ring doing what they're doing, but then you'd have little fracas going on outside the ring you know so it was still keeping it moving but this last one in AEW was literally people just lying on the on the side of the ring and then just coming to life at suddenly and jumping in and doing something yeah it, it was not fucking good, not terrible great, even jake even jake the snake took a fucking bump do you see that <laughs> he got involved jake the snake took a took a bump yeah what was it a flying ddt I'm not sure. I think it was a super kick. Oh, fuck off. I'm not joking. I'm not fucking joking. I'm pretty sure he took a fucking super kick. I shit you not. Fuck's sake. I'm going to fuck. I'm pretty that sure. I'm going to try and find the steel and put it on the screen. I'm pretty sure Jake the Snake took a fucking super kick. God. I. <laughs> we could talk about this stuff all night. Well, do you know what it was funny? Yeah, we actually contemplated doing maybe an episode on an AEW pay per view, but we're a retro wrestling podcast, so we're probably never going to do that until maybe we're like 60 years old and it's 20 years down the road. Well, someone we someone might... made a joke online and they got, I think they got reported for it. Um, I'm what? I'm going to apologise because I don't remember who did it. I just saw it and it's in my head, my head, but I can't remember who did it. And I can't, I don't have time to sh- scroll from my phone. But someone put that they can't wait to see the uh, rise and fall document, rise and fall of AEW documentary on the WWE network. <laughs> someone, I think someone reported them. No fucking way. Are you are you being serious now? Or is it you? You're not joking, I are you? I knew who it was. I. I want. Oh damn! I I don't really, I don't want to give the wrong person credit for it. So like, I I don't think it'd, it'd be smart. If oh, I that's did. fucking amazing, though, man. I mean, but what did we say, bruv? I yeah. I've even said it myself, man. Like, I I said buy up the AEW figures because when the company folds, they're going to be worth a fucking fortune. <laughs> I said that on one of our episodes. I'm surprised yeah. that didn't get flagged. For... It's yeah. It was a. It was a really weird time to be looking at like stuff on Twitter and stuff and that it was you know someone just having a joke having some fun and people reported it some oh, fucking uh, some fucking empty sack pencil dick loser like <laughs> <laughs> fucking reporting searching, searching the internet for outrage <laughs> fucking triggered bro i'm gonna put that's going on the screen fucking triggered man, oh, man. Like, some yeah. limp dick fucker wow but you know what it's everybody's gonna have opinions like it's it you know you n- it's just amazing to me it it really is amazing to me how this very small in comparison group of wrestling fans seem to just anything that happens in Jacksonville is perfect. Never has any issues can always be justified. 
can always be explained away as well. Can always be explained yeah. away. Yet they probably have never watched WCW Greed from <laughs> 2001. <laughs> Do you reckon Tony Khan was in the crowd for this? I'll give I'll give Tony Khan one piece of credit. He did pull the any AEW wrestlers from a show that was being promoted by Joey Ryan. That piece of shit. Um, yeah, he did. He did do that, and he made that very clear that no one from his company would be working on that show. Um, so I'll give him I'll give him a lot of credit for that. But he actually he, he actually said I'll give money to the charity, but no one's going to be working on it. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, fair play to, on that one. Was he in Jacksonville watching Greed? Who knows? I reckon he was, bruv. I mean, we know he wrote a couple of pieces of like a couple of reviews for the Observer back in the day, but you know, and he's still writing them now by the fucking because now he's the best booker in the world. Yeah, he's still writing them now by the fucking sounds of things. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, we, we we're gonna we're gonna keep doing it. We're still gonna have a laugh, and we're still gonna make jokes. This and has we been don't give a, it is therapeutic, yeah. man, because you know, life sometimes don't always go how people plan it to go. And sometimes things happen that can kick the shit out of you. And everybody yeah. needs, you know, everybody's got a way to relax, like everybody got a payday tax. You know what I mean? As has been said in a rap song. I, I thought know, we were getting one of Jerry Springer's final thoughts here. So and then he's uh, quoted, no, but, quoted rap. I don't think Jerry ever quoted rap. So. No, he never did. And he should have, you know, but this is the thing. <laughs> this is our therapy, you know, yeah. because like I say, we're all going through tough times at the moment, whether you're locked down and you're been furloughed or whether your business has been shut or whether you're just in general in life, think, you know, things are kicking the shit out of you or giving you a kick in the bollocks. You know, we, we all need a little bit of, a, a way to relax and a therapeutic way of releasing our energy and trying to do something that makes us happy. And this podcast makes us happy. We hope that there's other people out there listening that maybe if they're going through tough times, they can listen to us, have a little laugh and, and just in, enjoy it and just forget about what's going on outside of this little screen that you're watching. Forget about, you know, what the fuck is going on. Forget about everything in real life and just enjoy what we have to offer. And if you do enjoy what we have to offer, touch our bells because that will then in turn make us happy even more. So touch the oh dude, <laughs> I'll tell you what was funny though, MJF and um Jericho doing the, the Bucks thing. Doing the, the idiot pose, yeah. That was oh, it was funny. fucking great. Like I say, you know. But that's an, that's that's another story. But you know, please touch our bells, please keep watching, look through our um our archive of videos and um just just we're going to keep doing it we don't even, we've not even you know we've we've got no itinerary i mean jordan and i <laughs> are fucking we literally live from like moment to moment like well after this we'll probably say all right what are we going to do next you know we, i know are we going to mention about wrestlemania time about things that may be happening down the line uh probably not we'll keep okay. it, we'll keep rest, we'll keep the mania plans close but there will be something happening around WrestleMania time. So keep your yeah. eyes and your lug holes. Keep keep your mince pies peeled for that one. Keep your mince pies peeled and keep your ear to the ground. Um, And yeah, like, you know, couldn't have put it any better than Chris has. So, you know, I will definitely, I will just say, go out and definitely watch WCW Greed. It's a wonderful pay-per-view. You're really going to enjoy it. Like, it was, <laughs> it's great. World-class matches. <laughs> I can't do it with a straight face. <laughs> but the thing is, as well, watch watch AEW Revolution as well. Even don't just listen to whatever. Don't don't take people's word on it. Watch it yourself and and just fucking watch, watch it yourself. Take, form an opinion. Watch it objectively. Yeah. Don't watch it as though it's the greatest show on earth because it's and, not. Yeah, and don't watch and, it that it's a complete dumpster fire either. No, you know, watch it objectively. And yeah, I think that's that's probably the best thing we can say is watch everything objectively. Just you know, unless it's an unless it's an Arsenal Tottenham game, which we will never watch objectively. No, of course that's not. That's it. 
it's, um, <laughs> yeah, we it's, don't we don't know what we're watching next. We don't know what we're doing next. We, as always, we are communicating to you know probably at the end of this recording we'll say what we're watching next and we'll just figure it out that's just it 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 will be it won't be another wcw one we we like to alternate so it will be either wwf or tna possibly jordan or ecw yeah there's there's tna TNA there there's uh, ecw there's i don't know there's fwa you know (laughs) You know what would be really great though, as well, we, if we could watch maybe an old New Japan show or an All Japan show, because we I actually posted up on Twitter the finals of it was yes, a final I saw that yeah it was really good of the women's uh, women's title All Japan it was um, Akira Hokuto versus Aja Kong yeah fucking amazing match absolutely amazing yeah, match really good and. Absolute cracker, forty-five minute match, you know, ten minute fucking intro, you know, it was, it's just fan, it's an amazing spectacle. But yeah, that that was a that was a real humdinger of a match. So you know, maybe we can do like a, a Japanese show or something like that. You know, yeah, we we, can, we really we, don't know. We'll, we really we'll don't figure, know what we'll figure it out and we'll get to it. But for now, we'll say hit the subscribe button, follow, like, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone. You know, if you if you want to find find more, find out more from us, you know, catch us on Instagram, Twitter. You know, at Chat Grapple Pops. You can't miss the it. The links are all down there, man. All at there. Chat Grapple Pops. Instagram Let us know what you Twitter. think of Chris's picture with Tony Khan and Sunset Skip. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> all right, I'll put it on the screen and, again. There it is. Yeah. Have a little look, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end it. And uh, what a way to end it. And that I'll say I'll say bye for now and we'll see you soon. Bye.